Greetings everyone and welcome to another Starship Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the four pack of support carriers. I'm busier than ever these days, but I did make a bit of time to push out this review, which is not the legendary Sovereign, sorry, but these ships are relatively new, so I thought I'd get this out while it was still somewhat fresh. The Mad Lads at Cryptic actually gave us tier 6 updates to the Vokub and Aatrox, as well as some stylish versions for the Romulans and Jem'Hadar. They're all pretty much the same, with very minor differences. So I'm just focusing on the Aatrox version today, but what I have to say applies to all of them. I have to say that I was excited when I saw these were announced because the first ship I ever bought was the Tier 5 Aatrox. I have a soft spot in my heart for it, and I love the redesign, so I'm probably a bit biased here. I'm also a big fan of carriers and hangar pets, and these ships have some really cool hangar pets. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the ships first. The support carriers are, a bit unfortunately, just plain carriers with 3-3 weapon layouts, two hangars, a science captain seat, and little else. However, the bridge officer layout is quite nice with a 4-3-3-3 layout that's very uncommon. You get a lieutenant commander engineer, as well as the science captain seat, giving you the flexibility to run whatever cooldown method you want at the levels you want. It also has a universal command seat, giving it some teeth if you want to do a torpedo build or a side torp build like Augmented Dictator did in his video which I'll link below. Pretty much any way you slice it, torpedoes are the way to go on these 3-3 carriers, in my opinion, so having the command seat is probably the best thing it could have had. It would have been nice to get a full specialization, which is not unprecedented for sea store ships, so it's a bit disappointing. In terms of performance, these ships are not great. The console layout is only good for science, and it lacks a secondary deflector. It only has 6 weapons, and the turn rate and inertia are horrendous. Still, these problems can be overcome, but you'd rather not have to. The pets, on the other hand, are something special. The fighters get visual updates to squadron pets, so if you like the tactical flyers, you can get four different squadron fighters to use on any ship, and I think that's a very nice visual option. The frigates are really something special, though. The elite versions have two science captain abilities and a command specialization ability, which is just crazy. The captain abilities are really good, too. Sensor scan is a damage resistance debuff, and Scattering Field does a hefty point-blank AoE Cat 2 damage buff to itself and allies, including you, as well as some energy damage resistance. I wish they used this ability more often, but hey, it's still pretty cool that pets can do these things at all. They also have other abilities like Transfer Shield Strength, Suppression Barrage, and Hazard Emitters. They aren't strong damage dealers, but they really do provide excellent support, which is what they're designed to do. And frankly, that's more exciting to me than just another fighter that does more damage than other fighters. I really love these pets. I want to see more frigates in the future that can do other unconventional things. Let's talk about the trait and console. The trait, relaunch and repair, triggers when you launch pets and gives you a 5% recharge on captain abilities and 25% health regen to yourself and carrier pets. It's not bad and it's thematic for a carrier trait, but unless you're going for a pet based build, that's probably one you're going to want to skip. The console Entangled Quantum Bombardment gives you some aux power and hull capacity as passives, and the clicky does a point blank AoE team buff for you and allies, and debuff for foes. Plus it also gives all your hangar pets an immediate rank up. You get accuracy, defense, and shield resistance, and the foes get a damage resistance debuff. It feels like something a support craft should do, the damage resistance debuff is nice, and accuracy can translate into crit chance. So this is going to be useful if you're actually building your ship in a support capacity where your aim is to boost the DPS of others rather than yourself. If you're flying solo though, not so much. These ships do have something great going for them. They have fleet versions, which means you don't have to buy them from the sea store. Free to play players can grab them with fleet ship modules they acquired for doing reputations. And I did exactly that with my free to play Gorn engineer who's rocking the Jim Hadar version. You don't get the console or trait, but that's not a huge loss if you just want one of these ships. The support carriers are going to shine as support or nanny craft, where your pets and traits and consoles are debuffing enemies and buffing allies, so they can do more damage and have better DPS. Even if you play them solo, for the casual player, having two hangar bays is going to be enough for normal difficulty to chew through most content. They only fall down when you try to use them to get high DPS for yourself, but that was never their design, and it's not the only way to enjoy the game. Still, the community was hoping for a carrier revamp to help these science carriers, and it didn't happen, at least not yet anyway. They could have been better, but I personally think they're fine the way they are, given what they're supposed to be. 
In terms of performance, I'm going to give these two stars out of five. If we're only considering raw numbers, they might even be one star ships, but the command seating does help a bit, and I can't fault ships with support in the name for not being DPS beasts. So I'm going to let them slide into the two star range on that basis alone. In terms of everything else, the hangar pets, appearance, and all the other non-performance related items, this is an effortless five stars. They are some of the coolest frigates we've ever seen, the squadron updates are very nice, and all of the ships look fantastic. The Jim Hadar version is one of my favorite designs in the game. You should check out ZE Film's video if you want to see some ship porn on all the ships, which I'll also link below. In conclusion, these ships do hit the mark for what they wanted to be, support craft. They come with cool new pets, cool new designs, and fulfill the request from the community for years now to get updated versions of our favorite Tier 5 carriers. However, there are places for improvement. Even if it wasn't a complete carrier overhaul, they could have at least had a full specialization, and I think that's a bit sad. I did get the 4-pack, and I don't regret it. Whether these are something you're interested in is probably going to depend on your attachment to the old ships and how much you like carriers. Thank you very much for watching. Something something like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video, which hopefully won't be several months from now. Bye.